What's up YouTube? It's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I want to start this video by thanking each and every one of you for joining me today. If you have not yet subscribed, I would be absolutely honored if you do so. For those of you that have already subscribed, I want to say thank you. If you like this video or content like it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and click the notification bell so you know when the latest content arrives. Today, finally, I have in front of you something that I'm pretty excited about. As you know, if you've been following my channel, I'm a big Bose fan. Last year, we had the SoundTouch 300, and this year, we have the 700. The 700 has been out for about, uh, about a month or so now. It is, in my opinion, something that you do not have to get too excited about, meaning don't get too upset if you have the SoundTouch 300 thinking that, oh my gosh, I just spent so much money on the SoundTouch 300 and now the 700's out. What am I going to do? I got some really good news for you in this video and there's a lot to go over. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to break this into a series. That way we can cover different things and the video doesn't run an hour. Now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to unbox the 700 series. As you can see, I have the whole set here. Um, you know, basically they have named them different, but they are really the same. So when you look at like the Acousta Mass module, basically you just have the base module now. And then when it used to be the virtually invisible speakers, now they just call them the surround speakers. But to be clear, we're going to put these right next to each other so you can kind of see for yourself. But when it comes to the accessories of the system, and that is the base module and the surround speakers, they are virtually identical to last year. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, we have a new sound bar. So for those of you that are looking to upgrade from the SoundTouch 300, there is a couple different options that we can go through what you can do. Now, if you are in the market for a sound bar and you do not have one, at this point, the 700 is the latest edition. It looks as if Bose will be completely stopping production of the 300. Now, you'll still be able to buy the 300, I'm sure, in a lot of big box retailers until they run out of stock. And you probably will find it at Costco and Sam's Club. I want to give you a little bit of a warning when you go to somewhere, example like Sam's Club, Sam's Club had the 300 model and they had the subwoofer with the sound bar and it was only, I think it was a thousand bucks. When I first saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, how is it only a thousand dollars? Well, it turns out that they are actually not the same. So when you're shopping at those kind of stores, you need to be careful. This, um, the Acousta Mass module that came with um, the one at Sam's Club was literally half the size. It did not have the plexiglass top or anything like that. So if that's something you want to do to save money, great, but do not expect it to perform the same. That leads me into my next thought, and that is they did also launch the 500 model. Now, I did not buy the 500 soundbar. It is a lower cost model, and when I say lower cost, I believe it's 550. So it's not that much off of you know the 799 price tag, which is a hundred dollars more than last year's model. So we've upped the price. Now, as far as the virtually invisible speakers are now the surround speakers, we stay at the same $300. But all in all, if you are completing just these three pieces here, you're still looking about $2,000. So you have the 500 series. The 500 series also has its own subwoofer, but a lot of people out there, there is questions about, but what if I want to get the bigger base module? Will it work with the 500? I got great news for you. Yes, it will. They are fully compatible with one another. Now, they do not complement each other, meaning that you're not going to get the same experience out of the sound bar as you are the 700 from the 500, and they do not match, meaning they don't have the glass top. The next piece is the multi-room audio. As you know, they last year we did the multi-room setup, the SoundTouch 10. They have several models that went up to, I believe, $500. 
these will be continued to be made and they are only going to work with the 300 series. But this year for the 700 series, they came out with the Bose Home 500 speaker. We will check this out. Beautiful speaker. It sounds amazing and it just really looks nice. The biggest difference that we are looking at right here, if you were to say, hey, well, I already have the SoundTouch 300, do I need to upgrade? The answer is, if you strictly are talking quality of sound, no, you do not. Now, I told you that I had some big news for you, and I called Bose, and I confirmed this with them. When they launched this system, they made it, yet again, identical you were not able to use the Acoustamass module or the virtually invisible speakers with the 700. Great news. A software update did come out. You can now use your virtually invisible speakers from last generation's model in addition to your Acoustamass module with the 700. That is actually very exciting, meaning if you want to have the Amazon Alexa built in, you only have to upgrade your sound bar. Now, that is such a big thing because you are looking at, if you've already bought you know, the SoundTouch 300, that's going to save you about $1,000 in upgrade. Again, these are top tier pricing. In my opinion, they are a phenomenal product. They are worth it. But the next biggest problem that people have with Bose is Dolby Atmos is still not on deck. And I'm kind of getting to the point that I'm getting very frustrated with all these new technologies. You know, we have Dolby Atmos, then you have Dolby Vision, HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, blah, blah, blah. And it's starting to be kind of a war, just like we saw with HDD, sorry, HD DVD versus Blu-ray. Right now, it's kind of a lose-lose for the consumer. But is it able to be programmed into these systems? Absolutely. Could they come out with a software update that lets Dolby Atmos pump through the Sound 700? Absolutely, they could. Will they? I'm not sure. This all comes down to money, and it all comes down to them making negotiations with each other. The second piece to this is, is that they obviously signed a deal with Amazon to put Alexa in the bar. Now, again, if you watch my channel, I have no problem with Alexa, but I would love to see Google Home. To me, it's a far superior, superior ecosystem, but unfortunately, Amazon Alexa is who they went with. Now, what does it mean to have Amazon Alexa in the bar? Well, that means that they physically put an Amazon listening experience and output experience into the bar physically. So on the SoundTouch 300, you can control it with voice through you know, Samsung SmartThings, and you can use your Google Voice or Amazon Alexa. This specifically is built in. Therefore, you would not have to own an Amazon Alexa speaker of any kind. This would be able to control your smart home as if you owned any of the Amazon Alexa smart speaker systems, which there's a ton of them as we know. So good news is, is if you want to just upgrade the sound bar and you already have the SoundTouch 300 accessories, you actually no longer have to upgrade and buy these two. But again, we are going to unbox them. I'm going to put them side by side and we will go over in detail the spec. All right, we're going to get these unboxed. I'll spare you all the paper everywhere. I will go ahead I will break these seals and I'll get these all laid out. We'll take a look at what these look like individually and then we will compare them directly next to the SoundTouch 300. Really quick so you can see, they do do a great job on the presentation of the package and they make sure that this is really sealed in there so you don't have to worry about it bouncing around you know, it is glass, but Bose does say that this is basically unbreakable glass. So just wanted you to see that. All right, inside the box, you get your manuals. You get batteries for your controller. 
you get a cleaning cloth, an optical cable, you get an HDMI cable, which to be honest with you, you might think about replacing. I do want to say that the one in the SoundTouch 300 was giving so many people issues. Once they replaced it, they were no longer having those arc problems, but we'll see how this one does. And then of course the Adapt IQ headset and the power cable. As far as the remote, the remote is different than last year's model. I'm very interested to try it out. See that on the camera there. It's actually very sleek. Reminds me a lot of the way the Xbox remote is. So pretty cool. All right, so we got the surround speakers. Again, this looks like pretty simple packaging. Get it out for you. So of course in this box you get the two speakers. We'll look at those in a second. You get the power boxes here, power cables, and then all the little adapter pieces that you need and the little screwdriver that goes with it. Lastly, the base module. This is again the heaviest portion. So we'll go ahead and cut this open. They do something nice here because this is so heavy, they actually put some hand grips in here. So you can slide your hands in there and then you're going to slide this whole cylinder out. Again, very well packaged. Now they put the two books on the outside and looks like just the power cable. The rest is going to be sealed again into this box. So basically three boxes in. We get to it. Okay, so let's talk about the Bose Base Module 700. This is something that everyone always asks, do I need to buy it? It's expensive, do I really need it? Well, let me say this, Bose does this much better than many. They can make something that's not that large really, really, really rock your house. And in addition to that, it's fully wireless. So when you throw that in there and you can move it to where you want it without running a wire, it's absolutely amazing. Now, let me just say you can hardwire it in if you really want to. So that is an option. Now, basically what you're looking at is one cubic foot with a 30 pound enclosure. They use a 10 inch surface mounted front firing subwoofer. So basically down in here, you get your sub and you can actually see it in there. Now, Bose has something that's called Bose Quiet Port Technology. And basically what I'm trying to get at here is I, I know that you've all heard those cars that have you know the boom and bass and you hear the trunk vibrating like crazy this will not do that so basically they take a 10 inch surface mounted front firing sub they increase the airflow and then decrease the driver turbulence by using a transmission line and their Bose quiet port technology it basically guides the port all the way down to the bottom exits. And if you put your hand here, you can actually feel where it exits out. And it basically exits out the bottom of the cabinet and then it just drives that pure thunder with zero distortion. And I can say guys, really honestly, the SoundTouch 300, I mean, I can crank that all the way up to max with max bass and this thing does not give you distortion. And then in addition to that, it's beautiful. You have the glass top of course still, and, you know, that's just something that looks really nice. Now, this material is kind of a softer material, but it does get fingerprints on it easily. But this is a must-buy if you want the full 5.1 surround sound. All right, now we have the surround speakers, you know, this year's version of the virtually invisible speakers. Now, last year, when these were first launched, you were not able to adjust the volume, so a lot of people were not happy with them. Here's why. When you add the subwoofer and the surround speakers, you turn a standard soundbar into a full 5.1 surround sound unit. Now, for those of us that know how surround sound works, the rear speakers are for, you know, flying bullets in the air or, you know, birds chirping. They're not something that produces volume all the time. Bose came through with a software update through the app and they allowed you to adjust these all the way up to 10. So when you wanted to listen to music, you could crank these. In the beginning, 
they were only useful for 5.1 surround sound. Now I can say to you, they are very useful and definitely a must buy for listening to music. Also, it sounds great when it's surrounding you. Again, we'll go over this more in the setup video, but I wanted to show you another thing. Though these are small, remember they have to be plugged in. So you have a power box here and then you have a power cable and the power cable goes in here. So you basically have the power cables and then in addition to that, you have the actual optical line. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people think that that's a big issue. It really isn't. You got to have power to them. You know, I know that they, they used to call them virtually invisible speakers. They changed it to just surround speakers. I think they did that because people were complaining about the line. Not something to worry about. Basically, you could set these up behind you and they work well and they are a definite must buy if you like to really rock the house with music or if you want to have full 5.1 surround sound, you have to have these also. But basically, there they are. Okay, so in front of us, we have the all new Bose Soundbar 700. Let's go ahead and start on the back here. Basically, you have an optical in, you can see that there, an ethernet, a service port, that's where you plug the power cable. Then of course you have the data, the IR, the adapt IQ, and the base module if you wanna hardwire it in. Here's the thing that I found very interesting. This was supposed to, or at least I read, was supposed to have the brand new eARC support on the back. This actually just says ARC, just a standard ARC. Let's see if you guys could see that. That's actually a big deal to me because as you notice, it is missing its extra HDMI in port. We'll get to that in one second. I wanna show you guys real quick. It does have the quiet port and phase guide technology, so you don't need a base module necessarily, but if you really wanna rock the house, you do. But this does a great job on producing sound. And then of course it has that beautiful grill that wraps all the way around. But let's get into why I thought that that extra HDMI port was something that was nice to have. In last year's model, you had an extra HDMI. So therefore, if you had four HDMIs on the back of your TV, you're gonna use one of them for ARC support. So you lose one of your HDMIs. They had one on the back of here. So in sense, you would just plug whatever it was, your Blu-ray player, let's just say straight into the bar. Now you did not technically lose an HDMI port. That's completely gone. And then in addition to that, they took out NFC. These are things that you might want to look into as far as whether or not you want the 700 or the SoundTouch 300 before you can't get the 300 anymore. Now, they also were, I don't know if it was Bo saying it, but I was reading a lot of articles that were saying that it was going to have the eARC support, which is the enhanced ARC support. And that's basically the new standard of HDMI 2.1. It basically will give you just pure sound. And when I say pure sound, I mean it will not, um, what is it, suppress any of the audio. You would get the full signal, whether it be DTS-X or Dolby Atmos, which again is not in this. I'm just saying they were, I thought the ER, so I'm a little surprised it's not there. However, Let's talk about the features that it does have. You have eight microphone array. It does use the phase guide and quiet port technology. It does have an integrated audio amplifier. You can connect it wireless or with a wire with the subwoofer. So you have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So you guys do know this is important to a lot of people. The streaming music services that are built into the bar are Amazon Music, Deezer, Pandora, Sirius XM, Internet Radio, Spotify, which is a big one in my opinion, TuneIn and iHeartRadio. I wish that they had Google Play Music, but they don't. Um, and then again, let's talk about the size so you guys know. It is 38.5 inches in width, um, 4.3 inches in depth. The height is 2.3 inches and the weight is 10.49 pounds. Now that is ever so slightly lighter than last year's model. And then of course you get a one year 
um, warranty through Bose. And so you guys do know, again, it does have a DTS decoder and a full Dolby Digital decoder, turning it into Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound only with all of the items this that we This video have. is really dedicated to explaining the product so you can make an educated choice on whether or not to purchase. I thought that these captions were pretty cool. It basically shows you where at in the bar does what. So basically at the edge here is where you have the clear voice pickup. You know, a custom design eight microphone array is literally built in right there. And then we got basically the Adapt IQ is also over here built in, and that is where it uses the room's acoustic to give you the best audio performance. There is a light bar that's built into this, and I'm actually excited about this. I'm sure it's going to look awesome. Um, in the setup video, again, we'll turn all of this on and check it out. But basically, it is the Alexa bar, of course. So if you're not sure if she heard you, the light bar will help indicate that it's listening or thinking of what you're doing or speaking of. The phase guide technology is actually right here. And of course, phase guide technology works with tiny transducers to direct beams of multi-directional sound delivering an unprecedented level of spaciousness. You feel like the sound is coming from places outside of your sound bar. So basically, again, this is where I said it's a lot like Dolby Atmos. Bose uses the environment to bounce sounds off. Um, as you can see in this diagram I'm showing you, you can kind of see how it has its kind of channels. So the sound is literally coming out all over, makes it a really unique and amazing experience. That's why I'm such a big fan of Bose Sound Touch and now the 700 products. Um, of course, it's got custom design, low profile transducers. They provide superior clarity while maintaining an incredibly slim design. As you can see, those are kind of right here in the bar, kind of dead center. Right when you're dead center in the bar, you can see how it has its chamber ports that kind of you know guide the sound through. That is just really awesome how much technology they can put in such a beautiful bar. Again, it also is such great build quality. I can't just stress that enough. I mean, as far as this thing vibrating, it ain't going to happen. I mean, this thing is one solid piece and it looks beautiful and it just feels high quality. So you're definitely getting what you paid for. And that is a top high end sound bar a real quick comparison these are the virtually invisible speakers and the all new surround speakers as you can see there is zero difference they are exactly the same in the way they look and connections this is the last year's model and this is this year's model let's go ahead and we're going to look sorry about the bouncing i just want you guys to see these this is the acoustamass to the left from last year and then the brand new um, sub from this year on the right everything is identical as far as the way they look their weight um, you know the size speaker everything is identical including the side now where you start to see a difference is down here at the bottom on the ports now we're going to look at the um, sound bar next but as you could see let's try to get real close here for you this is the Acoustamass from last year. You have the sub in, the Acoustamass in, the status and the service, and then the power plug. When you jump over to the newer model, you only have the base in, the status, the service, and the power plug. So you are missing this port here. Don't forget, you still can hardwire the subwoofer in. And then I was looking also if you look down here on the amps, now you're probably not going to be able to see this, um, 100, 240 volts, and then we got 50 and 60 hertz at 180 watts. If I jump over to here, we are looking at identical numbers, 100, 240 volts, 50 and 60 hertz, and 180 watts. So as far as the way this thing thumps and all the good stuff, we're going to be exactly the same on both the sub and the virtually invisible speak. Okay, so on top we have last year's sound touch, and then of course we have the sound bar 700 on the bottom. 
This is going to be the most important comparison. Now, I'm also going to throw up some screenshots. You could pause right here so you can compare the two again. But I want you guys to pay close attention to the back so you can kind of see what is different. So again, sound touch from last year, Adapt IQ optical in. Down at the bottom here, we have an optical in and an ethernet. The service ports are both in the same spots. And then you can see where you lose the HDMI on the new model. You have the arc support, but notice this one has the HDMI in and then the one below has nothing there. So you lose that. Jumping over to this side, there we have the Acoustamass that's on, as you saw last year's model. Their Ethernet is on this side instead of that. And then let's see if we can get that to focus in. You got the four ports here on the new one. And then, of course, the power is in the same spot. Now, as you can see, as far as size goes, everything else is spot on identical. The chambers are all in the same spots. Everything is identical about these bars. Like I said, the new one weighs slightly less, but sound quality, again, I highly recommend you know either of these products at this point as far as sound, sound quality goes. Uh, last thing to note, remember, the last year's model has uh, NFC. We've talked about this already. You lose that with the bottom, uh, the 700. Keep calling it the bottom, sorry. And then you add the Alexa, that's built in with the 700, but you can still control the bar with the external Alexa with last year's model, or if you have some Samsung smart things like I do, you can use Google. Now, other than that, we'll flip it around. On the box of these packages, it makes the grill look like it's different. Now, the grill is actually lighter color on the 700, and remember, the 700 does come in white this year. But other than that, they are spot on identical. The grill is actually has the same size little holes in it as last year's. The box actually looks much different. It makes it look like these holes are much bigger. And then on last year's model, you could see that you have all your little port lights here. And then this one is going to have the Alexa bar in it. Again, this video is all about the information you need to make a decision on purchase. I am following this video up with a full setup video. We're gonna set it up, we're gonna turn it on, we're gonna look at all the features when it's hooked up and hear the way it sounds. But for now, here is a direct side-by-side -side comparison for you of all the products that you would want. And I would honestly say at this point, definitely, if you already have the virtually invisible speakers, unless you're gonna add a complete new system, I would go ahead and use those with your, uh, your 700 bar. If you are buying the whole system, definitely you want to get the newest at this point. Why not? Get yourself the sub, get yourself the virtually invisible speakers, and then the sound bar will just be up to you as far as what features are more important to you. Do you want the extra HDMI port and um, NFC, or do you want to have the voice control of Alexa? That's we will have to test out and see what's better, but we will definitely do that in the very next video that will be out very, very soon. Well, that concludes my first video on the Bose 700 series. As always, I want you to stop for a minute and realize life is so short. You might be suffering from an illness, a hardship, a heartache, there are so many things that go on in each of our lives day to day that can be devastating. Life is so short. Don't forget to breathe the fresh air and realize that life is a beautiful thing. Love your family. Love your neighbors. Take care of each other. The world is such a cruel place and every day I just see tragedy after tragedy, and the only people that can do anything to change it is us. I am so absolutely honored that you took the time to watch my video. I do YouTube for you and you only. So if I can help you in any way, please reach out to me in the comment section. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. But if I can help, I will. Just ask. I want to say thank you, 
so much. Be sure to check out my next videos on the 700 series. I also have tons of other great videos on my channel. I'm a small channel and I'm still growing. I appreciate your guys' support so much. And I can't wait to talk to you in the comment section and see you in the next video. Until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic. I'll see you later.